Get ready. It's time for a Sermon Sketch Notes Community Member Spotlight with your host, Raven Henderson. Recorded live in front of a Facebook audience. This is your group, and we're about to meet yet another awesome person in our family. Community Member Spotlight starts now. Hello, everyone that's watching live and watching a replay. I'm Raven Henderson, your host and the Sermon Sketch Notes community. And brought like Craig Wilson. Hey, Craig. Hello. <laughs> cool. If y'all don't know, Craig has some very interesting sketch notes that stand out from everyone else's. Um, they're just so cool. I'm going to see if I can pull up a few of them on the screen. We've been playing around and talking for a while. So now I've got like some of all of his stuff all up on the screen. Um, if anyone is watching live right now, can you just verify that you can hear it It'd be great as well and I'll pull up this folder again with some of Craig's work so these are just some of the sketch notes that Craig has posted in the sermon sketch notes community Craig, how did you get interested in sermon sketch notes? Um, well, I've kind of always doodled in church ever since I was a little kid. Um, I think I'm a visual learner, uh, and um, I get a lot of imagery in my head when I'm listening to the sermons. Uh, and I guess as I matured in my relationship with the Lord, um, kind of started speaking to me through some of the images uh, in what I was hearing in the sermon. So it just kind of developed as I got more uh, led to study the scripture seriously. But it's something that um, I've always done. In fact, my mom sent me this card. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, and she kind of did the same thing. Um, she's always doodling and doing crafty <laughs> stuff. And you can see there's Bible verses and everything on here. And, and when I got it in the mail, I was like, oh, so that's where that came from. Uh, so I think it's partially hereditary. That's cool. That's a nice thing to inherit. Yeah. I love that. I just love the combination of... Um, the image in your sketch notes, um, whereas some of us just take chunks and put it together. Do you do yeah. this in real time or later on after the sermon <clears throat> um, process? It depends. Um, I'm pretty, like I said a minute ago, intuitive in how I work. Um, so, Generally speaking, I start off um, with a sketch and then I'm trying to think if I have my sketchbook here. Ah, sorry. Um, so I might start off with just um, a pencil sketch or a pen sketch uh, depending on my mood. So, for instance, this is a sketch. I don't know if you can see it where it's just pencil and I'm starting the color. Uh, in um, a little bit up in the upper left hand corner there uh, but generally I start with pencil and if I'm brave enough in the service I'll start whooping out the watercolor um, <laughs> so over time it'll get more developed sometimes I work on it for days or weeks um, sometimes I'll come back and um, be so inspired by what I've learned in the uh, sermon or from the word that I'll start, you know, studying uh, that particular passage or reading commentary. And I'm um, very easily distracted. Uh, so I try to have the drawing right there so that I can kind of work on the drawing and study and work on the drawing and study. So it's it's an organic process and it's it's not regularized at all 
that's cool. It makes me think of um, of Rob Demio, or is it Demeo? Man, he taught me how to pronounce it in I our group. <laughs> right. Yeah, I love and, this. Um, yeah, he kind of big image to encapsulate everything. Uh -huh. um, and um, and uh, Stephen Silbert, who um, also spends a lot of time studying, um, going into each drawing, yeah. versus someone like myself, I'm just kind of taking live notes as it's happening. Right. So I think that's really interesting. I have a thought of applying it to the uh, Sunday morning experience, but not to the individual Bible study type. Yeah. Um, experience. That's yeah. Really cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm really active, you know, on days besides Sunday, I, I go to Bible study, uh, generally at least once a week and then Wednesday service. So I'm drawing a lot and, um, sometimes, um, you know, what I do in the service, and, and I've started kind of pushing towards just using pencil in the service, but sometimes I just can't help myself to whoop out a pen. Um, but uh, I do like move stuff around, so later it becomes more of a draw or a designing process, I should say, where, oh, the text is too crowded here, I need to move it over, um, expand, contract different shapes within the image to create more of a, an interesting balance, et cetera. Um, and then lately I've also been trying to maybe take the sermon notes and do them on a larger scale um, in, a, in oil or acrylic. Um, but I think the thing that I really like about the sketch notes is the immediacy of it. Uh, when I get into um, painting with oil or acrylic, I immediately tighten up, um, and it's really hard for me to get the the freshness uh, that you have in that um, smaller scale. You know, oh, I've got an hour or two to finish this. Um, I think sometimes I, I even overwork the sketch notes, so I'm trying to discipline <laughs> discipline myself to you know, okay, I'm not going to spend more than two hours on this. And uh, the sermon sketch notes com the community, I, I, I sometimes ebb and flow in my my persistence in posting, and I, I need to be a better uh, steward of that because that's kind of like, okay, I got to get it out there for uh, the folks to see. Um, so that, that might help in restricting my time a little bit. Yeah, I haven't been that avid of a poster, even though I'll – have notes in my notebook, but not posting them. Yeah. Um, you talked about oils and paints and acrylics. Can you tell us more about your, because it's much lean. Well, you dropped out there at the end, but I'm assuming you're asking me to show you the types of materials I use for the sketch notes. Um, yeah, that and in, in your artistic background. Oh, okay. So um, because yeah, I, I started off um, studying. Well, I have my master's degree in fine arts. Um, I studied uh, at the University of North Georgia uh, in Athens, Georgia, for my undergraduate degree, and then I moved up to um, uh, the University of Maryland and College Park, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., uh, and that's where um, I completed my studies. And then I started teaching uh, visual arts as an adjunct professor at various universities uh, and then moved back to Georgia uh, in 2006 and um, started teaching at colleges around here. Gradually, I um, migrated to just teaching at the University of North Georgia uh, in Dahlonega, which is where I currently teach. Um, and I live here in Dahlonega, Georgia, up in the mountains. Um, and I teach all kinds of different uh, approaches to 2D uh, and some 3D as well. So I'm both um, a two-dimensional artist as well as a three-dimensional artist. Um, 
mostly I'm teaching ground level foundations classes in drawing. In fact, the video that you're showing right now is uh, from my figure drawing class, which is my favorite class to teach. Uh, and uh, that's a colored pencil on white paper uh, that I'm demonstrating. And uh, this is part two. So behind me in the video, I have a group of students and I'm trying my best to explain what I'm doing um, while drawing, which is always a difficult process. But as far as my own art is concerned, um, I, I use uh, for my more refined, I guess, fine art paintings, quote unquote, um, oil and acrylic mostly, uh, and watercolor is my uh, favorite medium of all. Um, that's what I use for the sermon sketch notes, um, finishing stages. Uh, in the beginning, I use, um, like I said, just a, a normal a mechanical pencil. And then I use um, the Prismacolor and the Faber-Castell uh, permanent pens and um, Tombow uh, markers and pens as well. Uh, this is a relatively new uh, brand for me. Uh, I have a student whose mother is a rep for Tombow and she brought me a goodie bag of all kinds of stuff which was really uh, quite a blessing. Um, here lately I've been using a lot of just traditional um, ink as well. Um, black cat ink and the old-fashioned nib pens um, which I was teaching cross-hatching to my students and I hadn't taught ink in a long time um, but I, I went to China over the summer um, to teach and uh, have a good friend over there who taught me some skills in Chinese ink painting and that got me inspired to, to start exploring India ink and Chinese ink so I've, I've started using just the old-fashioned um, pens as well. Uh, and then... Uh, what kind of nibs are you using on those? <clears throat> uh, calligraphy uh, nibs, mostly just the flat uh, nibs like that. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. And then um, I'm also using um, the bamboo brushes and then uh, this is a brush I got on an Italy study abroad, which is a Leonardo da, Vich, da Vinci Artissimo, which is a sable brush that's really nice as well. Um, and then these, I'm really addicted to these. Uh, the watercolor pens, have you used those? Is you that fill, a water brush? Yeah, you fill this with water, and then it's got various size brushes and th this is great because I can you know actually paint in the sermon uh, and nobody will be any the wiser uh, and I have a, a variety of um, watercolor let's see if I can open it yeah yeah Paul, yeah, Paul Joy, Joy our chaplain in Australia uh, uh, commented on the calligraphy games. Yeah, they're fun. And I'm actually, you know, one of my biggest inspirations in my art is um, the manuscript tradition, like um, uh, illuminated manuscripts, uh, sorry, manuscripts, uh, and uh, historiated initials, all of the, you know, stuff from early book uh, illustration in the Christian tradition. Um, that's That's something I've really been um, studying a lot that and uh, William Blake and his poetry and illuminated poetry um, so I'm trying to teach myself calligraphy as well um, and actually I'm going back to just practicing uh, cursive because I, I tend to just write a very uh, eclectic you know um, print uh, in my sermon notes and I, I really want to explore the word um, as much as I explore the image. 
I'm just going to pull up some of your sketch notes. Sure. Again, and look at your lettering because it for well, some of us are trying to figure out how to have the different fonts. Like yeah. you, you're just doesn't seem like there's anything. Doesn't seem like there's anything what holding you back and no. uh, just so many fun fonts you use. Yeah, without a glitch. Yeah, here it is, part two. And we're live. Okay. So, Paul, Joy, and Pamela. We are here. There we go. So, hopefully, they'll see us there. And I will make this. Can I edit the. Uh, Edit post. All right, and I put a note on there that part two is separate. All right, so. Um, there was a question that um, Paul had in the last conversation. He asked if you ever use your brush, um, your water brush for let, let, lettering. Um, I, well, I mean, I, I, I use it to um, fill in the letters that I've created with pen but I haven't really explored using it as a lettering tool in itself. And I think one of the things that um, I don't, I, I don't know if any of the folks will um, resonate with this, but I have artist guilt about certain practices that I have um, <laughs> that there are certain things that I know I shouldn't do, or there are certain wishes that I had, about what I could or should do. Um, and one of them is I tend to be very linear uh, in all of the things that I do. I think maybe growing up watching cartoons and always having a black outline around everything um, is stuck in my head, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work myself into doing things a little bit more, um, with implied edges instead of, or implied lines instead of actual lines. So just contrast instead of outline. And, um, you know, that would include lettering. Um, but I just have this habit and this urge all the time to put a nice big black outline around everything. Um, which, you know, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'll just uh, keep doing it because God kind of put that in me, you know, to, to be that way. And if I try to back out of it and do something just because I appreciate it in somebody else, it may not necessarily be right for me. I guess that's a really long answer to his question. Yeah, I know. Um, oops, didn't want it that way. There we go. Um, Paul comes from a calligraphy background yeah. and, um, even he's got a really cool video. I hope he'll put it in the comments or post it on the page about how he switched from his dominant hand to practicing with his non-dominant hand. And it gave him a real appreciation for learning again, a skill he, I don't want to put words in his mouth and say that he took for granted, but right. um, just relearning like all the intricacies of something yeah. that he had developed over time. Yeah. And I think uh, um, the same can be said about lettering and outlining and other things that are just typically us and um and it's part of our style like yes. it's so crazy sometimes we look at other people like i can look at your work and be like oh this is craig's work this is craig's style and then yeah. i could like try to mimic it and or think man why don't i have a divine style uh like yeah. that was 
that was weird. I tried to say, I said divine, and I think it is both, but well, no, <laughs> that, but, um, you know, I, 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 I would, I would concede that point because I think that, um, you know, our experiences, everything that we do, uh, everything that we watch, everything that we, uh, hear, everything that we taste, um, it goes into our bones and, you know, a good for instance is I really appreciate uh, artists whose work is very, I guess, neutral in its palette or very minimal in its palette. I just, when I see work like that, I just love it. But I cannot do it. Uh, when I get, I, it doesn't matter how much I sit down and discipline myself uh, to, to mix more subtle color uh, or browner or grayer colors. I just have a really hard time uh, doing that. I think boldness is part of, of my style. Um, and, you know, at a certain point, um, I tell my students this, you have to accept who you are and accepting who you are means both, you know, the things that you know you're good at and the things that you wish you could change uh, about your approach to art making. You're an accumulation of success and failures, of uh, abilities and limitations. Uh, so I think that um, if you don't learn to accept that, uh, you're miserable. And I was miserable for a very long time. Uh, and I want to help my students um, recognize uh, that uh, so that they can find joy in what they're doing. Sweet. Sorry, I like that. I'm not ready to move on because <laughs> that's something like we have to like, like constantly be told. It's hard to even just tell ourselves that. Yes. Um, and um, or to recognize all the things that God has given us and put inside of us. Yes. Um, yeah. So, and that's not. I do, go ahead. Go no. Go ahead. I was going to say, that's not to say that um, within our art and our lives, we're not meant to grow uh, through and from the suffering and the pain. I mean, the Lord um, called us to struggle. He promised us that we would struggle, and he is sanctifying us um, through that um, and you know I tell my students when they start hating their work and when I say that in the midst of the process of creating it that is and you know I have to be careful because I'm working in a, a secular setting um, but I get very Yoda-esque on them a lot uh, and I, I, I tell them you know the pain that they're feeling the the discomfort um, the, ooh, I hate this, that, that is, um, it, it can be, you have two choices at that point. You can either give up and throw it away, which I never let them do, um, or you can see it as a nudging uh, to try mm -hmm. something new and different and, and to push uh, into territory uh, that you're not comfortable or familiar with. And that's, of course, the way that we grow is by getting in those uncomfortable situations or uh, I call them briar patches. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I had a colleague knock on my door just then. Hi. <laughs> uh, and, and, and getting out of those briar patches uh, is where we uh, move into to new territory. So. Oh. Well, before we um, had our um, online snafu, you were telling us about your watercolors as well. And um, I wanted to hear more about about that, about the watercolors that you use when you when you create. You mean Oh wait, I don't I don't want to move on. Beth just left a comment. Yes, amen. Sometimes the storms come to clear the path for us, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Um, 
you you showed a watercolor palette yes um, can you tell us more about those watercolors because that's not that's not a crayola watercolor palette you've got no. there um well i i have a bunch I, i'm i'm a collector i love collecting stuff especially small portable stuff um i use a lot of different brands of watercolor um let me see the koi watercolor set is another one that i use and it's smaller uh and then i have a really tiny windsor and newton one that i thought i had here um but i can't find it for some reason uh, does it look like this one it's smaller than Wait. that even. it's smaller but, than this yeah it's like really oh here it is see a little tiny okay thing. and these have like boxed or what do you call it like the the little like, tray yeah the tray watercolor set other ones you use two watercolors for it the bigger yeah. palette okay. yeah so so this is a little cornell palette that i bought at hobby lobby and i just uh filled it with watercolor and let it dry um, when i was in china a friend of mine that i met there gave me they love giving gifts in china and he gave me this uh, little set it's called a splendy and i don't even know if they make it in, in america um, but this one's really nice because it's sealed so the watercolors it's very deep so you can put um, two watercolor in there and it'll stay mostly wet uh, and then the bottom has this little palette uh, that can rest on top and then it's got, for whatever reason, a little stirring stick that goes with it. But <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I collect. I have a, a bad addiction to art supplies. So, uh, but especially portable things. I, portable Bibles, portable watercolor sets. I do a lot of hiking and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, everybody's like, I'm, you're mobile everywhere you go because I've got basically a whole art studio in my bag that I carry with me everywhere. Uh, Cause I never know when the um, bug is going to bite me. But like I use um, a Pentalic uh, sketchbook. That's usually what I carry with me. Um, and let's see. I'm not familiar with that brand. Yeah. Pentalic, uh, you know, it looks like a moleskin. But I got it on Amazon, so there's one in process. And then I also I found another nice little one that I haven't started using yet. Um, not sure what it's called. Oh, hand book, hand dot book, and it's okay. square and different format. And then, oh, I got one more the other day, too. <laughs> it's called Field Artist. And this one's really nice. It's only four inches by six inches. And it's got actual uh, watercolor paper in it. So I'm going to try oh. experimenting with it next time. But this, the, the main one that I use is six by nine inches. And then when I get, I, I think... Well, I don't guess we mentioned I have a show coming up in um, Richmond, Virginia at the beginning of April, and they're going to be showing about 12 of these sermon sketch notes. So I started disassembling um, the Pentelic book to take them out so that I can frame them, which is nerve wracking. Sort of. Well, oops, not that one. All right. I've pulled up your website here. I want you to tell us a bit more about your work that's going to be in this in this art show. Yeah, so I have 12 pieces um, that are sermon sketch notes. I call them um, uh, illuminations oh. instead of uh, sketch notes because... Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm um, 
fascinated with illuminated manuscripts um, from you know the medieval era. Um, so I'll be showing about 12 of those. And then I'm gonna be showing um, some smaller watercolors uh, that are landscapes, um, some printmaking uh, that I have, uh, two larger paintings. I think the, the one that you saw earlier uh, on the website from um, the woodpecker painting that I have uh, there on the front page. Yeah, that one. That one's about six foot by four foot or so. Um, and then some of my sculpture as well will be on view. And it'll be on view the whole month of August. But the reception or the opening is April 5th or that Friday. That I guess is that the 5th or the 6th? I can't remember. Um, and then uh, I'll be doing an artist lecture, uh, which I'm excited about. So, yeah. I was slow on the draw there. We got Beth and Katcha um, asking for your website address. Yeah. So, um, just want to say it out loud craigwilsonart.com. Yes. I know sometimes people download the um, these sites and paths. So, if you're just listening instead of viewing, that's craigwilsonart.com. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of keeping up with you, what is your um, like Instagram handle? Craig, uh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I think it's Cray Mar Will. C-R-A-M-A-R-W-I-L, which is the first three letters of my name. So Craig Marshall Wilson, um, Craig Mar Will, all one word, C-R-A-M-A-R-W-I-L. You'll have to tell me if that's correct, I don't, if you're looking it up. Oh, I guess I should. No, no I Do I spell out Wilson? No, I no. don't. Yeah, it should just, there it is, yeah. Kramar Will, C-R-A-M-A-R-W-I-L. Cool. I love that you post these videos and so we can see the work happen. Yeah, they're lots of fun. I really enjoy uh, the time lapse. It's interesting. It, um, something about watching yourself work uh, is, I don't know how to explain it exactly. Um, it abstracts you from the process. And I, I, I'm not really critical of what I'm seeing. I'm just like, what is happening? How, you know, it, it, and I, I don't know how to explain it without sounding like I'm, I'm narcissist looking in the pond at myself because I'm not, um, experiencing a sense of wow i really like what i'm doing it's just it's almost like you you're out of your body watching yourself that that's i think that's closer to what i mean it's like an outer out of body experience um and it actually reminds me of a of an interview that i saw with Henri matisse where they filmed him and uh he said i saw my hand moving and i didn't have any memory of my hand moving and that, that's kind of the feeling that I have. I, I don't realize what I'm doing. Um, and that's kind of an interesting sensation. And it's helpful, but I'm not exactly sure why it's helpful. Um, other than maybe I'm a little bit more accepting of what I'm doing. Uh, because of it, I'm not as... Um, Annoyed with myself, maybe. Which I tend to get annoyed with myself. And I have to remind myself, now remember what you told your students. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of like a sports player. Like, 
um, how when you, um, well, I'm not a sports player, so I'll just stick with what I know. Like right. silks, sometimes they'll record me on the aerial silks, my instructors will, yes. to help me see where all my body is moving. Because in the moment, <laughs> focused on different things than like what my right leg is doing. Yes. But when I get to watch the recording, I'm like, oh, so that was connected to that. And that's how that happened. Yes. And I think the other aspect of it is um, I have a tendency, and I think a lot of artists do, where you get to a point where you question, am I done yet? And then you step over the line and then you ruin what should have been put to bed and i think that when that happens and i have documentation of it i'm able mm -hmm. to say okay now i recognize where i need to stop next time uh, which can be helpful so so your um pastor's wife on here Let's see your church's first lady yes. has said craig does amazing work so, oh, um, what is the response you get when you share your sketch notes? Um, like, have you, go ahead. Everybody's very supportive um, of it. Um, they encourage me. Um, I think one of the most common things that is said is you should do a devotional book, like a coffee table devotional book where you, because I also write a lot. Writing is very important to me. Um, so I'm thinking about, you know, maybe uh, having the image on one page and then my verbal or literary interpretation of that image on another page. And, you know, maybe like a coffee, a coffee table style uh, book that can be uh, a devotional. And I'm also interested in, in writing um, children's books as well and illustrating. Um, that's something I've, I've got on my um, radar for the future, though um, I haven't really had time to. I, I've started a story, but you know how things go. You, you have to be <laughs> uh, pokers in the fire sometimes, so sometimes nothing gets done. Uh I, I don't want to forget this. Beth um, asked again for the information on the Richmond, Virginia show. Yeah, so um, that's the first uh, week in April, the first Friday in April, at a gallery in Richmond called Gallery Edit, uh, E-D-I-T, Gallery Edit. Uh, and Gallery Edit is connected with a missions organization. Uh, it's really an interesting model. Um, and it's uh, right in the Arts di District in Richmond, and that, that first Friday in April uh, is uh, the first Friday event. Every month they have a gallery crawl, and this gallery is on that crawl, and it's a, it's a Christian gallery, um, and I guess they consider uh, it kind of a, a mission to use art to bring people in who are interested in art um, so that they can be exposed to uh, vibrant and dynamic Christian art that's being made. Uh, because I think um, one of the misconceptions about Christian art is that it has to be very um, illustrative or um, overly focused on the specificity of um, the stories from the Bible, and I don't think it necessarily has to. Uh, and there's a lot of diversity uh, in Christian art and, and art style. Some of it's very direct, um, some of it's very serious, some of it's very humorous, some of it's very um, abstract or non-representational. And this gallery, I think, is kind of has as its mission uh, to show that uh, diversity in what Christian artists are doing right now. So I'm really excited um, about that. Um, 
And of course, one of my heroes is Francis Schaeffer, uh, who wrote How Then Shall We Live? And I think the thing that I appreciate him for the most is the fact that um, not only was he a real advocate of Christians in the arts, but he was an advocate of art, uh, both secular and sacred, uh, as an expression of the human condition. Um, so I think it's really important that, uh, you know, we keep our feet in the game as Christians uh, within the art world and that we don't um, walk away and leave it um, to the secular world because I think that abdicates our responsibility as believers. Sweet. Thank you. Um, well. I'm just pulling up. Beth says she found Gallery Edit on Facebook. Yes. And she's listed their Facebook page for us. Let's see. I, um, before we sign off, because we're close, it doesn't feel like it's already been an hour. And I like, know. and we talked for a good, like 45 minutes before it got started, too. Yeah. But uh, I just want to um, thank everybody for showing up and everybody that's watching on the replay. And we know that we can um, keep up with Craig and find him at craigwilsonart.com and on Instagram at C-A-R-M-A-R-W-I-L. Yep. Uh, and, um, yeah, and that if you're not already following him, following him, as an individual on Facebook, like his private Facebook page or his Instagram, you're missing out on some really cool time lapse videos of his work in progress. Um, if you're anything like me, you're fascinated by someone that can put together so many layers, and it's sweet to see those layers come together um, in the time lapse videos. Uh, so if you have any last minute questions, ask them now. If you are watching this as a replay and have questions for Craig, you can contact him directly or you can tag him when you comment on this video yeah, and that way. Yeah. He'll be, he'll see that you've commented after the live video is ended. Um, coming up over the next few weeks with spotlight interviews, we have um, Ross. Um, man, Ross, I'm forgetting your last name. Bone Boone, Ross Boone of Ross Boone. Maybe that's how I need to remember it. He's an illustrator and does great things and it's being showed in Atlanta area. Man, we need to have a Georgia meetup. We got a lot of folks around Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, and uh oh, who am I forgetting? Uh Natalia. Let me see if I'm saying this right. Um oh Natalina. Okay, I'm not gonna butcher any more names. I'm just gonna make some more um, invites for the different events coming up because I think the next three weeks, we're um, back on roll again of doing the spotlight interviews and getting to meet everybody in our community. I've been missing it, y'all. I've been yeah. feeling the weight of putting together some of my own projects um, that I'm behind on, but realize that I do get a lot of energy and motivation out of interacting with everyone in our group. And I hope you do too. It's yeah. inspiring. Um, and it's a great feeling to be inspired by impressive work instead of condemned or being or feeling like, Oh, I never can do anything awesome. But um, we have awesome people like Craig that know all the ins and out of art and are willing to share it with us as long as with their, um, their study and their spiritual walk as well. So I don't see any additional um, questions while we're alive. Craig, is there anything I forgot to ask you about that you wanted to share? No, I think you did a great job. And I just want to thank you uh, for stewarding this page. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful, wonderful medium and a wonderful fellowship um, to see and, and have and be a part of. And um, like I said, when we were, um, talking uh, before the Facebook uh, went live, um, you know, there was a time when I first started doing this where I said, you know, I feel like I'm the only one. And when I found <laughs> sermon sketch notes, um, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not great. 
<laughs> there are other folks like me. So thank you for all that you do. And I appreciate you uh, having me on. Cool. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll surf around in a while and have you again and you can play that violin or fiddle or viola or whatever it is that's behind you. Fiddle. <laughs> fiddle. Okay. Yep. Maybe at the Georgia meetup. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Craig. And thank you for everyone tuning in. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Beth, yes. Pam. You Who else did we see? Catch all. Um, you're the international man, the one that just went to China. You can help me with all the names. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll see everybody inside the group. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.